In a recent video, Dr. Taylor Marshall misleads his viewers by making claims about Paul VI and the Second Vatican Council that are inaccurate. In his July 16, 2020 video, Does Vatican II Contain Error?, Marshall says, Now, Vatican II is controversial because the Pope who closed it is Paul VI. When he closed it, he said something that's quite controversial. So it ended December 7th, 1965. Actually, Vatican II closed on December 8th, not December 7th, 1965. What Marshall is referring to is the closing of the fourth session of the Council, not the closing of the Council itself, which came a day later and where Paul VI gave a final address. Next, Marshall quotes from Paul VI's closing speech of the fourth session as follows. Paul VI said this at the closing of the Second Vatican Council, December 7, 1965. He says, quote, The magisterium of the Church did not wish to pronounce itself under the form of extraordinary dogmatic pronouncements, end quote. That's a big deal. I'm going to put on the screen. I want everybody to see this. Let's see if this will work. There we go. Perfect. There it is. Put it right, right up here on the top. The Majesty of the Church did not wish to pronounce itself under the form of extraordinary dogmatic pronouncements. In other words, it was not going to exercise extraordinary magisterium. Wait a minute. Although what Marshall quotes Paul VI as saying is accurate, the quoted sentence does not in fact end there. Marshall simply cut it short without indicating in any way that he omitted something. As it turns out, the omitted portion contradicts his position that Vatican II was not binding, as he states explicitly in his book Infiltration, The Plot to Destroy the Church from Within, on page 143. There, after quoting the same words from Paul VI, Marshall asserts, quote, This effectively hamstrung the Council. It's true that theological statements are made throughout the conciliar documents, yet the Council made no extraordinary dogmatic pronouncements. Nothing binding came from Vatican II. Unquote. Paul VI's closing address of December 7, 1965, can be found in English on the Vatican website. There we find the full quote of what Paul VI actually said, which is, quote, But one thing must be noted here, namely, that the teaching authority of the Church, even though not wishing to issue extraordinary dogmatic pronouncements, has made thoroughly known its authoritative teaching, on a number of questions which today weigh upon man's conscience and activity, descending, so to speak, into a dialogue with him, but ever preserving its own authority and force. It has spoken with the accommodating friendly voice of pastoral charity. Its desire has been to be heard and understood by everyone. It has not merely concentrated on intellectual understanding, but has also sought to express itself in simple, up-to-date, conversational style derived from actual experience and a cordial approach which make it more vital, attractive, and persuasive. It has spoken to modern man as he is." Unquote. Thus, although it is true that Paul VI acknowledged that Vatican II had not issued any dogmatic definitions, he was nevertheless equally clear that Vatican II was teaching authoritatively that is, bindingly. This is not unusual. Not everything an ecumenical council teaches or decrees is a dogmatic definition. However, everything an ecumenical council teaches or decrees is authoritative, as it is the Vicar of Christ speaking in union with the world's bishops. This is confirmed, for example, by Pope Leo XIII, 
who teaches in his apostolic letter Secut Acceptum of April 29, 1889, quote, There can be no doubt that the decisions of the Holy See or those of the general councils, above all in matters of faith, are by themselves and by their very nature obligatory on all the faithful. Unquote. Notice that Pope Leo says above all in matters of faith and not only in matters of faith. For those who believe Paul VI to have been a true pope, therefore, what Vatican II says is not optional. Infallible or not, it is obligatory. Marshall cannot argue that an ecumenical council is necessarily called to define dogmas. For example, on page 239 of his book, The Church in Crisis, A History of the General Councils 325-1870, church historian Monsignor Philip Hughes writes that the Second Council of Lyons, held in 1274, concerned itself with, quote, the problem of the Holy Land, the reunion of the Greeks, and, of no less importance, the general reformation of morals, especially in the lives of the clergy and of the bishops, unquote. Regardless, then, whether Vatican II infallibly defined dogma or not, if it was an ecumenical council of the Catholic Church ratified by the Roman pontiff, then what it teaches and decrees is binding on all Catholics. Taylor Marshall continues. So Paul VI then clarified a few months later, in January 1966. Let me see if I can make this better. Yeah, this is good here. In view of the pastoral nature of the council, it has avoided proclaiming in an extraordinary manner any dogma carrying the mark of infallibility. End quote. Again, Marshall quotes Paul VI, but cuts the quotation short without indicating that he did so. And once again, the omitted portion contradicts his position. What Paul VI said in his general audience of January 12, 1966, is this, quote, In view of the pastoral nature of the Council, it avoided any extraordinary statement of dogmas that would be endowed with the note of infallibility, but it still provided its teaching with the authority of the supreme ordinary magisterium. This ordinary magisterium, which is so obviously official, has to be accepted with docility and sincerity by all the faithful, in accordance with the mind of the Council on the nature and aims of the individual documents." Unquote. Again, this stands in clear contradiction to what Marshall says in his book Infiltration on page 143, where he repeats both truncated quotations from Paul VI and says, quote, This effectively hamstrung the Council. Nothing binding came from Vatican II. Unlike the previous 20 ecumenical councils, the Pope placed an asterisk next to Vatican II. Unquote. As we have seen, that is false. Paul VI stated clearly that Vatican II was authoritative and binding on the consciences of the faithful. It simply avoided making infallible dogmatic definitions. The Church's authority is not based on her infallibility. It is based on her divine institution and mission. Marshall concludes, So, if there is a dialogue, if there is a debate, if it's not infallible, it's, if it's not under the extraordinary dogmatic pronouncements of the church, then we should be able to go through the documents and say, this is ambiguous, this is problematic, and can we say this is erroneous? Is this an error that is in the church? No, we cannot. Pope Pius XI teaches in his 1930 encyclical Casti Canubii, number 104, quote, For it is quite foreign to everyone bearing the name of a Christian 
to trust his own mental powers with such pride as to agree only with those things which he can examine from their inner nature, and to imagine that the church sent by God to teach and guide all nations is not conversant with present affairs and circumstances, or even that they must obey only in those matters which she has decreed by solemn definition, as though her other decisions might be presumed to be false or putting forward insufficient motive for truth and honesty. Quite to the contrary, a characteristic of all true followers of Christ, lettered or unlettered, is to suffer themselves to be guided and led in all things that touch upon faith or morals by the Holy Church of God through its supreme pastor, the Roman Pontiff, who is himself guided by Jesus Christ our Lord. Unquote. If Paul VI was a true pope, then Vatican II is an ecumenical council of the Roman Catholic Church, whose documents are binding on Catholic consciences, just as are the documents of all other councils. Of course, Vatican II is erroneous and dangerous. But the necessary conclusion, then, is that Paul VI was not a true pope, but an impostor, and therefore he could promulgate documents containing dangerous errors and heresy. It is only by distorting what Paul VI actually said that Taylor Marshall can maintain a contrary position. For more information about the errors and inaccuracies, half-truths and unsupported and misleading claims in Taylor Marshall's book Infiltration, go to Tratcast. Dot org. That's tradcast.org and listen to Tradcast episodes 27 and 28.